Hello, everybody. This is Heather Butt from Health Youth, and we are starting our webinar series. And this webinar series has to do with COVID-19 updates. So by way of information, I'm the co-founder of the nonprofit Health for Youth, and um, I have a background in public health and public health law. And I've been doing webinars for the last couple of weeks around COVID-19. I also teach public health law at Long Island University, as well as St. John's University School of Law and Columbia University. And so it's been a very interesting time to be a public health professional doing what I do in the era of COVID-19. I thought about what I'd do today. So today is April 3rd. The day is getting a little, <laughs> it gets a little fuzzy as to what day it is. Uh, today is April 3rd, 2020. I'm going to do these updates every Friday and Tuesday, and they'll be short, you know, maybe 15 minutes. Today, I'll probably give a little bit more background. I'm in the state of New York, and our situation here is decently unique. And we are one of the epicenters for COVID-19. Certainly in the United States, we're probably the epicenter right now. And for the world, we're definitely one of the epicenters. I think what I'll do is just give a little bit of information about what we're currently dealing with here in New York City. And then on the Tuesday update, I think I'll do a little bit more looking at public health law and, and the background and so forth. And I, I feel like for me, this is good to do because it'll be sort of a trajectory of COVID-19. I was looking at some of the webinar materials that I prepared about 12 days ago. And at that time, New York had a little over 7,000 cases. And now we have eighty three thousand, something like that. There's a lot more. Let's put it that way. So I think that's how I'll do it for today. And then hopefully as people have more thoughts or questions, they can let me know about that. All right, so I have on the screen the policy that New York is under. It's called PAUSE, Policies to Assure Uniform Safety for Everyone. And this is not a shelter in place order per Governor Andrew Cuomo. Uh, it took effect uh, well over a week ago. And it ensures that people are safe during this time period and essentially stay in place <laughs> as much as they can in New York City. Although, to be honest with you, it's actually not that difficult since there's nowhere to go. So for people who don't want to stay in place, I'm super curious as to where they're going because there's not really any place to go. So maybe they're just kind of driving in their car, driving around. Um, this is obviously not people who are first responders. It's not people who are essential workers. These people have somewhere very important to go. They need to go there and be able to get there unencumbered by people that don't have anywhere to go. Um, but for the people that have nowhere to go, I don't know where they're going. Uh, maybe driving around in circles in their cars. Um, so if you don't have to be somewhere, if you're not an essential worker, if you're not a doctor, if you're not a nurse, if you're not, you know, a community worker that's trying to get food to somebody, for example, and they can't get food. If you're not somebody that um, your services are absolutely needed, then you should be at home. And that's what PAUSE is trying to do. So PAUSE, 100% of non-essential workers must stay at home. Non-essential businesses must close. They are closed now. Non-essential workers are at home. Uh, New Yorkers over 70 must remain home except for solitary exercise. Uh, they must wear a mask in the presence of others and check the temperature of any essential visitors needs. Uh, it goes on. It 
have to do with non vulnerable populations. Non essential gatherings of individuals on any side for any reason are canceled or postponed at this time. Any concentration of individuals outside of their homes must be limited to workers providing essential services, and social distancing should be practiced. Uh, when in public, individuals must practice social distancing of at least six feet from others. And it goes on, businesses and entities to provide essential services must implement rules that help facilitate social distancing of at least six feet. Individuals should limit outdoor recreational activities to non-contact and avoid activities where you come into close contact with people. Individuals should limit use of public transportation to when absolutely necessary and should limit potential exposure by spacing out at least six feet from other riders. And this just goes on again in terms of um, trying to avoid vulnerable populations. Yeah, outdoor recreation. According to Governor Cuomo, outdoor recreation is a solitary recreational exercise, running, hiking, not playing basketball with five other people. That's not what it is. It's not laying at a park with 10 other people and sharing a beer. There's a certain place in New York where it looks like life as usual. It's not life as usual. That is correct. And this is to go over Matilda's Law, which is for the most vulnerable people over the age of 70. They're to remain indoors. They can go outside for solitary exercise, as was just described. Governor Cuomo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Governor Cuomo. Uh, please screen all visitors and aides by taking the temperature. Do not visit households with multiple people. All vulnerable persons should wear a mask when in the company of others. The greatest extent possible, everyone in the presence of vulnerable people should wear a mask. Um, always stay at least six feet away from individuals. Do not take public transportation unless urgent and absolutely necessary. All right, so I thought I would just take a few minutes to give an update on what's going on now. These are the latest uh, numbers and information as of yesterday. So, um, New York has a ventilator shortage. And the state just got 400 ventilators to Health and Hospital Corporation, our public hospital system here in New York City specifically, and 200 um, to Long Island. We have six days of ventilators in stockpile, and then that's it. Bed supplies and staff are the mantra that Governor Cuomo keeps using. And it's helpful because hospitals are becoming more and more stressed as this goes on and they will continue to be stressed. Uh, people who have supplies that are helpful can contact COVID-19 supplies at esd.ny.gov or call 212-803-3100. And the state will pay. So you don't have to just give away things charitably. We have the comfort ship that is here in New York and the federal government is actually operating that. And we also have the Javits Center, which was going to be just for people who were suffering from non-COVID related diseases, but now it's gonna be for people who actually do have COVID-19. So it's gonna be a little bit of a hybrid. Um, Curfews may be possible in New York. There are curfews in other places. Right now in New York City, we don't have a curfew in the same way that let's say in New Jersey does, where you have to be in your house by nine o'clock in New Jersey. Uh, here we don't have that. And so that may become a thing here in New York. All right, I'm gonna end this for now. And when I come back on Tuesday, I will have more details regarding the latest and also go into a little bit more detail regarding some of the public health law implications and some of the research that we know to be true. All right, thank you very much and stay safe.